Coming up next on Abrasive and Proud of It Live. Love it when we're live. I'm Chris, and I'm in the studio. Uh, we're going to talk about blades. And what you'll notice is that it's in the on position, but the tip is not hot. Okay, so I'm not going to burn myself. Just like that, this is called jogging. This is my kind of jog. I'm not into that uh, heavy physical fitness stuff, so this works out good for me. Um, today we're going to be talking about chucks and the cold jaws would be for taking and holding the bulb this way. We always recommend leaving at least a 16th inch gap. It actually moves up and down and side to side uh, that are great if you're just looking to get something small to do some little tinkering with. Welcome to Abrasive and Proud of It Live. Today we're talking alternative wood holding with Mr. Chris Denson. Chris, what do you got for us today? Well, today we have nothing but other options for work holding on the lathe. Last week we talked about nothing but chuck holding and chucks and jaws and everything like that. But this week we're going to get a little bit different. Anything from pin turning to bowl turning to uh, finial turning to anything that you could possibly come across in, in the, the turning world. Um, first off, most lathes, they do come with a, uh, as this one here has, a drive center and a live center. Um, everybody has that pretty much with the lathe. And then they also come with a, uh, probably a three or four inch face plate, something pretty simple like that. Um, you can do quite a bit with those. Um, anything from turning a bat to roughly turning a bowl. Um, but there are other options out there. Like if you're going to do a lot of production spindle turning, we have other things that will help you out. Like we do have these very nice, or what they're called, step centers. Um, and both of these, this this one right here is the, uh, the live center, and this one is the drive center. What's nice about these is both of them are the exact same size. Um, that way, if you have something in the lathe, um, say, Say you have something over here in the in the live center side, you have something over here in the drive center side, and you need to get something over here, say you're right-handed, you can actually take that out, flip it completely around, and match up where your prong was so you find center real easy. Um, we, have, we have things like that. We also have uh, some smaller ones, like if you're going to do something where, where, where you're holding the... Uh, the back of the finial or something like that. Um, we have little bitty ones that make it real nice. And the other th nice thing about these is they are spring loaded, which comes in handy when you're trying to uh, when you're trying to center something up on the lathe. Say, say as an example, I had this one and I had the live center. If I had something that needed to be perfect and centered, I can kind of move it over here into the spring of, of this live center and then move it over here in the spring and kind of maneuver each other until I find that perfect center and then just lock down my tail sock and then I'm good to go. Um, we also have some, uh, some a little bit higher end drive centers, like if you're not happy with the drive center that comes with your lathe. We also have some aftermarket ones, um, like this one here that is a, a billet piece of steel. Um, really nice, really, really sharp. Um, these I've, I've had for quite a while and I've never had one slip on me. Some of the, the, the ones that come with lathes, um, they're a little bit cheaper, made out of like pop metal and the, uh, the tip of the prong will actually round over and kind of get a burr there and eventually not be so good and you have to sharpen it. We also have some higher end live centers, um, say for an example here, the, uh, the one-way or Powermatic style live center. As you can see, this one has the cone with the center point so you don't split your wood. Get that back into focus. And then it also has a threaded pattern 
so you can stick a, a big ginormous cone on it that way if you need to center up like a uh, like a hollow form or a vessel or something like that you could stick that cone on there and then also they have little bitty cones so you can do other things like that the other th nice thing about these powermatic and one-way style big monster live centers as they're also double ball bearing so if you're going to be turning for quite a quite some time you have that longevity in there where the tool won't heat up and also since so many people have them they also make um, face plates to screw on this thread pattern there um, that way you can hold something big from both sides and have it real secure and then they also have um, especially from one way we have these uh, replaceable tip centers. And what's nice about the, the tip that comes on these regular, regularly, um, it's hollow and it's just a, a small Morse taper in there. You can knock that tip rod out and put these little bitty micro tips in there. And what that's nice for is say, if you have a bowl where you're trying to turn off the foot of the, uh, if you, uh, if you're trying to get in here and turn off the foot of the bowl rather than getting up close to these threads and worrying about r ruining your thread pattern here you can get it close to that tip and uh, make sure uh, you're not tearing things up back here um, we also have other forms of drive centers that are a little bit more heftier um, like these two here uh, back into focus this one here in my right hand is a, uh, a big monster one made by Nova. It, it's threaded on the back for an inch and a quarter by eight. So if you're going to do some big hefty logs or something like that where you need to hold on, you have these big, big old prongs that are sharpenable. You can take them out and sharpen them, whatever you need to do, adjust them, which is very nice. Um, it just threads onto any uh, inch and a quarter style lathe like so. Um, and then we also have this one here that is made for going into a chuck. So if you're the kind of person who does some uh, production style turning or you just simply don't like to take off your chuck, you just stick this into your chuck and then clamp down onto it. You're good to go. Um, Mike, do you have any questions for me so far? Not not at the time. I can say that the Jumbo Spur Center is a TE90870. And then there's also the live centers, which you'll cover in both a Morris Taper number one and number two. So we have those available as well. Yes, I did forget about those. Um, we do have number one and number two Morris Taper options. The number one is like your old Craftsman uh, lathes. Um, like this um it's, it's, it's about the size of my pinky um some people ask i don't know what size morse taper i, I have the, the best way to tell you is if if the the point that comes out of your tailstock here is about the size of your pinky most likely a number one morse taper if it's a little bit bigger like the size of your thumb it's a number two that's the easiest way i explain it to people and that kind of helps people uh, get down the right road of need, knowing what they need to get um, we also do have drive centers and number one Morse tapers. We also have uh, live centers and number ones. And number two is the most common, so we have more accessories for the number two Morse taper, which is nice because most every lathe that is made now, number two Morse taper. We do have the old school style that you did show in the picture there, the big hefty cone about like so. Yeah, there you go. Um, those are nice if you're going to be trying to get into something where, uh, say for this piece here, uh, say for this piece here where it's hollow and you need to get, get down in there and hold that and kind of stabilize it so you can chuck it up in the back and make sure everything's centered. That's what those are really nice for. Um, they're not the best for doing, uh, spindle turning because they'll, if, if you're pushing on the end grain, from your tailstock, it's actually a, a giant wedge and it'll split the wood and kind of tear out. So those big cone ones, they're nice for when you need them, but they're not the best in the world. The one that's there on the far right is what's called a, uh, a center point style. Um, that's the best one to get. If you're looking at one for an old lathe you found or bought off offline somewhere, 
that's the one I'd recommend because it has a uh, it has a there you go it has a, a point there in the center and then it's surrounded by a, uh, a, a like a uh, a cone shaped uh, circle all the way around and that way it gets the point into the center you're looking for and then also supports it and doesn't help doesn't split the wood on the end grain that's kind of the uh, the design behind that one there um moving along uh, we also have some face plates face plates are a thing that a lot of people love them a lot of people hate them in my opinion i'm in the middle of the road they have their good good sides and they also have their bad sides yeah if if you buy if you buy a lathe or something it's mostly going to most likely going to come with a face play like so um, you can turn bowls with them, but they're not the best in the world because when you have to flip the bowl around, you have to find your center again, so on and so forth. Some people don't use the right screws to hold the wood onto the lathe. I've seen some screws break off because you have to screw four, uh, four screws all the way around, preferably wood screws, definitely not drywall screws. Some people think drywall screws are good because they're nice and long. No. No, just just get some hefty wood screws, um, and I, I like to prefer something that you can stick a, a nut driver on, and and really crank down with some torque and, and make sure those screws are not in there nice and hefty. So would you say a lag screw would be ideal? Then? Yes, yes, like a lag screw, um, and then I recommend going in about two inches. Um, that way you have some some heavy support into that wood rather than just like a half inch because if a lot of people learning to turn they're still going through the learning curve of how to hold the tool um and if you catch that tool and you only have a quarter to a half inch of screw into that material it's most likely that screw is going to break out and tear that bowl off of the lathe or whatever you're doing um so if you're going to use a face plate I highly recommend having your tailstock supported at all times. Um, it's just a safety thing. Moving along, um, if you're going to be holding some weird shaped items, there's a lot of different options out there. Um, number one, you can make your own jam chuck where you clamp it down into your chuck and just round over the bottom. We also sell some nice jam chucks here. Um, they have a pretty much a face plate mounted onto the back of them and then it comes out here and what you do is you just thread this onto the lathe say if I was going to do like a um, like a live edge live edge bowl or something like that and I needed to take that uh, and say I need to take the uh, the tenon or the uh, the Morris off there. What's nice about the jam chuck is you can stick it onto the lathe, put this rubber mat that comes with it, and see see how this bowl here has these weird shapes and stuff like that. There's no way you're ever going to be able to hold that without something like a jam chuck to get that that foot off there. And then you can just bring up that that tailstock, support the lathe, turn that foot off of there, and go on to, go on about your day. Um, there's things like that that just make life a whole lot handier um, in the long run. And then other things like if if you're going to be doing a, a bowl, like an out-of-round bowl, say like this one here, this one here, you can see it's nice and warped and even so so warped that the, uh, the tenon here is warped a little bit. It's nice because you can stick that onto there clean up your tenon that way you can flip it around back and stick it in your chuck clean up the bowl whatever you need to do there um there are some other options out there um like non-conventional ones so while you're taking that off the lathe we did have a question uh gary jones asked you showed two one-way live centers what are the differences so the two one-way live centers that I showed, um, they're actually the same thing. The only reason I have both of them here is the, uh, the fact of I had that, that replaceable point in one of them. 
So I can show I can show that again. The the one with the replaceable point, as you can see here, it just has one little bitty micro point. Um, that's nice for doing uh, like finial stuff or taking off the uh, the foot of the lathe or the foot of the the tenon for the bowl. I really like that because that little point will actually get into the wood and dig down a little bit. We also have some that are, what do you call it, concave, convex, um, kind of hollowed out there in the center. That way, if you're going to uh, grab onto something like a, a rounded top finial or something like that, that little um, dished out shape there can hold onto that well. And then we also have another another point that will go into the Morris taper of the one way um, live center and hold on to that as well. So if you're going to be doing stuff like, uh, as I said earlier, holding on to something where you need to center back up in your truck or something like that there. Any other questions, Mike? No, not at this time. So would you recommend that if you're going to use those, those short um, pieces there for the live center, would it be better to have two live centers so that way you have one that's already ready to go for that particular project or is it easy enough to unscrew them and change them out? It's easy enough to unscrew them and change them out. Um, only reason I have two is, is because I got one for a good deal, and I don't like to change the change my chucks and live centers a lot. Um, as I said in the last video, I got quite a bit of the same thing, just different work holding options. Um, all you do is just take take the knockout rod that will come with your live center and just knock out the back, knock it out the back, and the tip will come out quite simply. Um, and and that's kind of kind of the only thing on that one any other any other questions well before i move on nope not this time you're rolling okay um moving on to we'll, we'll go back to the bowls a little bit um we also carry here what's called a longworth chuck um this one we carry we have the 12 inch the 16 inch the 18 inch and the 20 um we carry them in the the we carry them with the one by eight and also with the inch and a quarter by eight the 12 inch one is a one by eight and the 16 and 20 inch and 18 inch we don't stock but we can order that come with the inch and a quarter by eight what that's nice for is say i was i was doing the back of this this bowl again Say I'm, say I'm going back to, actually, I'm going to use a different bowl. Say this bowl here, I'm already done with the interior. I'm already done polished and on the outside. Say I wanted to just clean off the foot here. What I could do is these little rubber pieces will move all together at one, as you can see here. That way you can hold anything from big ginormous bowls this one's actually a 14 inch custom custom for my lay the home um all the way down to i believe a uh, four inch maybe four and a half inch and what, what these are these are for as i said earlier um is you stick your 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 bowl into here bring up your tailstock hold your center point and then just move those rubber feet until you're holding on to the bowl and then on the back of on the back of the chuck here i don't know if you can see it from above um kind of vaguely they have a bunch of wing nuts and you just tighten those down all the way around just kind of kind of move them around and and tighten them all down and when you do that these these rubber feet here will expand out and fill that extra void that way this thing ain't going anywhere and you don't even and with this, you don't even have to hold with your tailstock. Um, I I recommend it if you're using this for the first time. But um, what I do for a safety measure is I actually take the the tool rest and put place about a sixteenth away from the bowl here, and that way, if this bowl ever decides to come out of these rubber feet, it just bounces off the tool rest and goes right back in. That's kind of a, of a uh, self-taught trick there. <laughs> um, any, any questions from me, Mike? 
Nope, not yet. You're good. Okay. So that's that's pretty much all the questions I, I normally get here in the store for uh, for bowls and uh, uh, out of round stuff. Um, if if you have something that you just really can't figure out how to hold, um, say this this piece here that I have, it was it was two it was two small diameter wise to fit in, into my Longworth chuck. And I didn't want to clamp down on, on it with a regular chuck because I already fin or already sanded this end here. So the, the thing that I normally do, and it's kind of an odd one is I actually take a, a tennis ball, any tennis ball will work and you can either pressure feed it up into your chuck or even clamp down onto it as I have here for the tennis ball and just kind of press up against it with your live center and then make that uh, make that tennis ball kind of compress onto itself and then just turn on your lathe make sure your tail stock is up with your live center and then um, you should be spinning and good to go and do whatever you need to do to the top of your piece or the bottom of your piece whatever you whatever you have it that's kind of a, a little handy trick there um, because I've had to, I've had to use that trick a couple of times. Um, another, another little thing we have is this right here. This is actually made for, um, this is actually made for bottle stoppers. So if people were into bottle stoppers and, and things like that, this little thing right here is one of the most versatile things I've found for holding small objects like finials and what i particularly use it a lot for is chess pieces um, what, what's nice about these is we have these little threaded uh little threaded inserts that you can drill and glue into the uh, let me get back in focus here drill and glue back into the back piece of your wood and that way if you're going to do like say chess pieces with like the knight or something like that you can just Stick this onto your lathe, have this glued back in there, and then you have a pre perfect threaded piece. Anytime you stick it back on the lathe, you'll be back in center simply because this threaded insert is already in there. Um, and we only carry that one with a uh, with a one by eight. Um, there we go. We only carry this with a one by eight thread thread pitch. So the only downfall of, of if you're interested in this is you will have to have some kind of reducer from whatever size. Like if you have a big Rikon or Powermatic like this, you have to reduce it from inch and a quarter or whatever thread pattern you have to one by eight. That's the only downfall of this, but it's still pretty handy. Um, we also have some other work holding options like we... Uh, we don't stock them much simply because they are quite expensive, but we do have collet, colleted chucks um, and you just pop out the collet, whatever size you need. Um, like this one right here is, I, I believe, a 5 8 uh, and they have all the way down to an eighth inch uh, collet. And what's nice about these is they are so nicely machined, they can just spin on the lathe real quick. If you're going to do like a finial, that you've already kind of say like this finial here or something like that. If I ever needed to remount, remount it and do something up here and I need the lathe spinning or something like that, I can actually stick it back into this collet chuck and hold it just fine, especially if I only have this little bitty thing to hold on to. Um, any other, any questions before I move on to pin turning, Mike? Would you suggest that that threaded insert piece that you were gluing into the wood would be a good recommendation because it gives the chest pieces a little weight? Like, could you then add something else to it to give them more weight? Yes. Um, that is actually what I did for the chest pieces I did. Um, is The only downfall is they come in a four-pack, so you got to buy the four-pack. Um, but once you, uh, once you drill the hole and tap it on there, um, you can actually find like a bolt, like a heavy bolt or something like that and thread it into this pitch. And uh, 
and get some extra weight on to the bottom of it if you want. That way, if you're outside playing chess or something like that, the wind will blow them over. And then you can take that piece out, remount it on the lathe if you ever needed to finish it or refinish it or something like that. That's kind of nice there. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, actually, before we move on to pin turning, I, I do realize I missed something. We do have what's called a ladle chuck. Um, Mike, you have a picture there while I'm while I'm getting things ready. I'll, essentially, what this is is it's a face plate mounted jig. Um, what you do is you turn between your your centers. If we can go back over top. You turn between your centers of your lathe, uh, whatever shape kind of ladle you want, um, and then you you find what diameter of, of uh, the the top where you want to make the the spoon part of the ladle. Um, you find whatever top piece, and they have these these nice cutout pieces. There, there's little bitty ones all the way up to the, this big one here, and then you can stick the handle coming up through this way, if you can see back in the picture, it's kind of hard to explain without a, without a piece. Yeah, like that. Um, you stick that, that offset piece into the, um, into the chuck and then tighten those four bolts around and it'll actually hold that piece to where you do, where you then can turn the ladle part of the uh, ladle. <laughs> any, any questions about that, Mike? I don't know if I, no, that was good. So basically, instead of drilling it out or carving it out, the, the amazing ladle chuck will give you the ability to turn precisely the ladle size that you want or add a contour to it or something else. It kind of gives you a little bit more options. Yeah, and, and it also helps you do the offset properly. And also, I, for, I, I did forget to mention, um, it also helps kind of add a, a bounder, uh, counterbalance. So you have your, your handle coming up this way. Um, through the through this hole here, and then this little black piece kind of helps counterbalance that extra little weight that would be over here. So it kind of kind of balances your lathe just a little bit, not not precisely, but if you have a small uh, midi lathe or mini lathe, it kind of helps just a little bit. Um, now we can move on to pin turning, I guess. Um, with pin turning, there are a ton of different options. Um, anything from, from, um, uh, mounting your pin blank onto the lathe and drilling it, um, and then mounting it simply just to hold between centers and turn the shape of the, the, the lathe. We have these dedicated, uh, pin drilling chucks. Um, we only have them in, in one inch by eight thread, the thread pattern. For your, for your small lathes, mostly, um, most people, if, if they're doing pin, pin turn, they only need a small lathe. That's why we don't have the inch and a quarter. Um, but what what's nice about these is, as you can see on this picture here, it's only got two jaws. That way, if you have something that's a, uh, like, say, an exotic pin blank, and it was cut square back before it was kiln dried, but once it dried, it moved a little bit, those two jaws can help clamp on there that way you kind of center up the the pin blank a little bit easier there we have all kinds of different pin pin mandrels i'll get ready here um the most common is this one here um simply it's a uh, actually this one's a number one morse taper we have number one and number two of everything we're about to talk about here this is the uh most popular option and essentially it's a, a colleted mandrel so it, it's got a, a collet right here you just take to the two bolts and tighten it down and then you stick your pin blank on there and then fill up whatever say if you got a pin blank that big like for a slim line or something like that you fill up this gap down here and then you take the extra bushings that comes with it and fill up that extra space and tighten it down with this brass nut. Um, those are all fine and dandy, but I have seen a lot of times when people stick it onto the lathe and then put, put the point up against it or hold it like that, they put too much pressure on the tailstock onto this mandrel. And I've actually seen them bend. And uh, I've even seen one kind of give up in the middle of the gentleman turning 
and then you just had this big flying piece spinning at 3,000 RPM. Um, so to eliminate that, there are a lot of companies that have come out with other options. Um, we have the individual pieces by themselves, like we have the we have the Arbor number one and number two Morse taper. We have the mandrel, and then we also have the uh, the live centers. Um, so simply, what I like about these is you stick it in your headstock, your your Arbor and your mandrel, and then you put whatever bushings and, and pin blank you need on there, and then you just slide your tailstock all the way down to the end and press up against that final bushing. And then that way you are putting pressure directly onto your pin blank and not your mandrel. That is handy, especially if you're gonna do thousands and thousands of pins, you're making your tools last longer, which is what I like. Um, so we have those individually. If you wanna say upgrade your original mandrel um, away from the brass tube, you can buy the, the mandrel saver. And then we also have kits and the kits are a little bit nicer because they're all uh, machined um, they're, they are machined so they're, they're a little bit nicer quality and then you're saving a little bit of money because you're spending about the same price for all this um, into, into one actually that doesn't even go with it um, this one is called it as well except it doesn't have the the adjustability to clamp down onto it like uh, the other one did. This one is just made for mandrels. Um, so then you just clamp down onto it. Um, this one comes with extra bushings. Like if you have a sunline pin, you can kind of jump right into uh, turning with this kit. And then you just stick it in your tailstock and, and flip it right down. The other nice thing about these these little uh, kits that come together is this one is also a, a double, double ball bearing. That way, if you're gonna be turning for quite some time through the day, you don't heat up the uh, the the live center as fast. Any any questions, Mike? From you, is that one susceptible to the same amount of tailstock pressure as the first one you showed? Yes, they they both are. Um, you can you can press up with the 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 tailstock quite a bit and put all the pressure onto the bushings and the pin blank and make sure when you're actually turning the pin itself, like the wood and the acrylic or whatever you have, um, that that thing is perfectly round when you are done rather than putting pressure onto the mandrel and making that that round, if that kind of makes sense there. Yeah, yeah, so it stays true. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and kind of going back over my, little, my table here, um, I did notice I did forget something. Um, we also have some other forms of holding, like we have this here. Um, this is actually a, uh, a tap, that way you can tap your own, um, say if you want to make your own kind of wooden face plate or something like that, we have the taps. Um, we stock the one by eight. If you have an inch and a quarter, we can special order it for you, that's no problem. We also have some live centers that are threaded for, for, for one by eight. So if you want to stick your chuck onto the tailstock, we have that. Um, we do not have inch and a quarter. We don't have the ability to special order that, but we do have the one by eight. So if you got your mini lathe and you just need to really hold on to something, make sure it ain't going anywhere, we do have that for you. And that's about all I can see from my table here. Um, do you have any final questions for me? Not that I know of, Chris. What about you? Do you have anything for Chris? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. Well, uh, you can check out all of these options um, by giving us a call. We are putting them on the web. There's a lot of new options that we had. Uh, Chris Denson here is one of the purchasing guys as well as our resident turner. So therefore, he is you know, always looking into new uh, uh, new products and new options for wood turning and testing them out. A lot of these products that you see on the table are his. So he has not only backed them up by, you know, saying that uh, he's used them, but at the same time, he's also figured out the pros and the cons and where they work best and some things that you may not have known that you could do with them, which is always nice whenever you are a woodworker, you actually get to try things out. So you can give us a call at 800-228-0000. Ask for Mr. Stinson himself. If you have questions, you can shop us at woodworkingshop.com or send us an email at sales at woodworkingshop.com and ask for Chris on the video. He'll be glad to help you out.
All righty. So for Abrasive and Proud of It Live on today's Alternative Wood Holding special, uh, I'm Mike Z. Chris Stinson is their host. Yep. And thank you so much for joining us. Everyone have a great day.